So our last meeting in Hong Kong in March 2017 was very productive. We debated several important topics and launched some new work streams. On behalf of everyone who attended, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Madam Sun Yafang, the chairman of the board of Huawei, and the whole team of Huawei for the outstanding welcome they give us. It has been one of the busiest times on record after the meeting in Hong Kong for the commission and for the secretariat. In July, the high-level political forum on sustainable development convened here in New York under the theme of eradicating poverty and uh, promoting prosperity in a changing world. The commission submitted an open letter to the event, and we were pleased to see ICTs for SDGs figure prominently this year, in particular in many of the 43 voluntary national reviews and the outcome ministerial declaration. Our message is clear and seems to have been understood. We noted that the voluntary national reviews featured ICTs more prominently this year in areas as diverse as digital literacy, smart cities, digital infrastructure, digital entrepreneurship, health, gender, and financial inclusion. We need to keep up this momentum. In my view, the commission could submit an open letter to their next meeting of HARPF in 2018 which will be convened under the same transformation towards a sustainable and uh, resilient uh, societies, focusing on SDG 6, water, 7, energy, 11, smart cities, 12, environment, 15, life on land, and 17, partnership. Perhaps exploring, exploring additional opportunities and the presence of the Broadband Commission in New York during HLPF should be considered. This summer, many of you have been involved in our joint work on the Commission's annual report. Even more of you have participated in the work of one or more of the working groups. I'm pleased to see so much enthusiasm and effort from so many of you. Thank you. I also wish to thank the expert group, which was established in Hong Kong with a view to addressing some collaboration issues between operators and OTT players. I'm pleased to see that the group had met several times as they established a considerable common ground, which will provide them with a good environment to continue to work on the issue of the common interest. And the group submitted a draft report midnight last night, and we will receive uh, presentation of this by uh, Philip uh, Mesker, the chairman of this group. This year's State of Broadband 2017 report highlights several important findings. First, there is a suggestion that we are entering a winner-takes-all phase in digital development. Digital front-runner countries are moving even further ahead, while developing countries are generally being left behind. Furthermore, gaps in transmission speeds are also increasing, and there is still no visible progress that the digital gender divide is closing. Even in a high growth industry such as ours, there is still cause for concern. In a few weeks, I will address the seventh World Telecommunication Development Conference, WTDC in Buenos Aires, my message will be clear. It is our responsibility to bring the power of ICTs to all nations, all people, and all segments of the society. So ladies and gentlemen, new challenges are emerging, which the authorities and the public have to realize with regards to the importance of ICT to social economic development. More and more applications from different ecosystems call for the modernization of a tra traditional working environment and infrastructure. Instead of ICT coming to people, 
Now we see people are now coming to ICT. Authorities in many countries are starting to report on their national ICT platform, which can offer services to all.